I'll never make it as a doctor. A lot of these thoughts really constitute that phenomenon of imposter syndrome. Nobody really wants to label it as that. Nobody really wants to just dismiss their feelings as some sort of easily labeled psychobabble, if that's what you want to call it. But the reality is, is that imposter syndrome, those feelings affect many of us. My name is Dr. Rich Hills, and you're watching my channel, Knife Skills. And today I want to talk to really medical students, nursing students, anyone who's trying to achieve something in their careers at a young age. That, that's who I'm talking to today. And I want to talk a little bit about imposter syndrome. It's a feeling we've all had. And without a doubt, multiple times in my career, imposter syndrome has been a feeling that I've had. I can remember very much being a high school student, being interested in becoming a doctor. I remember people telling me quite literally that you might be doing well in high school, but that by when you go to university, the competition is going to be so much harder. Don't expect to be as talented or as good as you think you are now when you're in that environment. Don't expect to succeed. Those comments, I think, were maybe meant to be supportive in a sense that you know, you're going to have to work hard. It's going to be a change. Going to university is going to be tough. And yet at the same time, I don't really believe that those thoughts were constructive. In my own mind, they just confirmed a lot of the doubts that I had. And if you think about it, much of our lives are spent looking at people from the perspective of how they present their external appearance. So many people dress nicely, carry themselves well, have a persona that they show. And you think that that reflects who they are on the inside. But the reality, everyone is flawed. Everyone has weaknesses. Everyone has their struggles. And there's nobody who will go through medicine and have an easy time. I can even think of some of my close colleagues who I respect very much, some people who have been incredibly successful, that are, they're talented, they're, they're some of the best surgeons I've ever worked with, arguably in many ways, technically and uh, better than I am. And yet even those people who I know are fantastic talents that truly do stand out are in a lot of ways outliers. When you spend time with them and you, and you talk to them, even those people will describe feelings of fear of failure. They'll describe feelings that maybe I, I might not make it. And in some ways, we'll have used that fear to drive them to performance levels that are, in some ways, to the point of being an outlier. And I'm not suggesting that that be something that you do, but I am suggesting that imposter syndrome is common, even among the people who are most successful. I'll tell you a quick story. I remember when I was a medical student, really actually just starting medical school the very first day. And I had applied to a few schools. I had my acceptance. I went to the school I wanted to go. And I remember the day when my first day of medical school started. I remember showing up to the school and I remember thinking to myself, what if it was a mistake? What if I wasn't actually accepted to med school? What if everyone who doubted me was right and it was just something that really was an, an accident and they're going to tell me on the day one that, you know what, sorry, that was a mistake. We didn't mean to accept you to med school. I literally thought that when I showed up to medical school on my very first day. Obviously, that was an irrational thought. There was a lot that went into planning and preparing for med school. There was obviously no mistakes. But yet that little bit of fear was there. Even on that same day, though, I ran into a friend of mine from undergrad, someone who I worked with closely. And over the three years prior to starting medical school, she'd always told me that what she wanted to do was be a physiotherapist. And here we were on the first day of med school, and she was there. And I said to her, I said, Amanda, like, you said to everyone that you wanted to be a physiotherapist. And she admitted that although she would have been happy and proud with that as a possible career, she really wanted to be a doctor. And she, she got into med school, and, and we went through med school together as well and did some residency together. Her and I actually knew each other for a long time. But even her, she had this feeling of obviously self-doubt or at least doubt that she didn't want to put forward in front of everyone that she was spending time with as friends that she truly wanted to be a doctor. And so there was an element and even in her mind of some 
self-doubt, like maybe I wasn't the right person for the job, or maybe I wasn't the one who's most capable of becoming a doctor. So these are some examples. On the one day of school, there was myself who was afraid he wasn't going to get into med school, afraid that they, they had made a mistake. And my friend Amanda, who spent a few years, in some ways, not really being public about her desire and dream to be a doctor because of some underlying fear of judgment or fear that someone might cast doubt on her ability to do the job. So imposter syndrome is common. One of the things that inspired me to do this talk today, this video, was a paper actually recently published out of uh, my university. Uh, some colleagues and friends of mine published a paper called Imposterism, Anxiety Contribute to Burnout Among Resident Physicians uh, by Dr. Rachel Liu, a few other uh, authors, senior author here is Dr. Michael Ott, a few other mentors and friends. It's worthwhile taking a look, and I'd recommend that you read the whole paper, but uh, just from the abstract for the purposes of this video, there's a couple of things that are worth pointing out. The majority of residents, they surveyed residents from pediatric medicine to general surgery to anesthesia, and they actually found that more than 60%, the large majority of residents scored high on the imposter syndrome scale. They also show that people who scored high on that imposter syndrome scale were at risk for burnout as well, which I think is an important outcome. But I think it's worthwhile just sitting on that for a second. That great irony that the majority of people feel like they are an imposter from time to time in their field. The great irony is, is that there's nothing more normal, nothing more natural than to feel that way. In fact, feeling like you have imposter syndrome is almost evidence that you don't have imposter syndrome. In fact, the people who are likely to be imposters, the people who are kind of faking it till they make it, the people who are, you know, pulling that catch me if you can kind of move where Leonardo DiCaprio pretends to be a pilot or pretends to be a pediatrician. Gentlemen, what, uh, what seems to be the problem? Bicycle accident, fractured tibia about five inches below patella. Hmm. Dr. Harris. Yes? Do you concur? Uh, concur with what, sir? W with what Dr. Ashland just said. Do you, do you concur? Oh, uh, well, it was a bicycle accident. Um, the boy told us. So you concur? Concur? I think we should take an x-ray, then stitch him up and put him in a walking cast. Those people who have this extreme confidence, this ability to feign what they're doing, the people who truly are faking it are oftentimes the ones who don't feel the imposter syndrome. The, the people who are legitimately accomplishing things are the ones that oftentimes feel like they are an imposter. So what? how do you beat it? How do you get ahead of this feeling of imposter syndrome? Well, first of all, from a big picture experiences, the more you're doing what you do, the less it feels unnatural to you. The more you sp time you spend in your specialty, the more time you spend doing the job that you're doing, the more normal and natural it becomes, the less you're going to feel like an imposter. So it does fade over time as you develop your skills. And truly, the, the better you get at what you do, the less you'll feel like an imposter. But you got to get there. You got to believe that you can do it. So that's the, that's the number one thing I would say is work towards competency in your area and know that the feeling will fade. So that's number one. The next thing I think, and what this video is all about, is normalizing the idea of imposter syndrome in your mind. Like I just said, the majority of people in your area, in your shoes, feel like they don't belong from time to time. And that's natural and normal. So know that that's the feeling that you have. And then the third thing I would say and actually it comes out in this paper quite a bit, is find mentors. Now in the paper, they talk about support systems. So people who have a lot of support are the people, and I think really truly we're talking about mentorship. We're talking about models in your life that are doctors. Those types of people are great support that can help you deal with and overcome and reduce that feeling of imposter syndrome. And why does that come from? Well, if you've got close 
friends in your life or mentors that you know well personally, you know them on a level that's more than just their accomplishments, then you'll see them for how they are as a real person. I mean, the more you know someone, the more you see their flaws, the more you see their weaknesses, and the more you normalize that these people have their own flaws, weaknesses, difficulties, despite their great success. So finding mentors in your life that you can get to know and develop a relationship. Again, at our university, we have academic coaches. And that's an opportunity for really doctors that are experienced to mentor and support medical students, really a way to, in my mind, connect with them on a human to human level. And they get to see my weaknesses and flaws as less of a uh, top down relationship. It is more of what we call coaching, really more of a, of a, of a, of a lateral type relationship. And that allows the medical students to recognize, hey, you know, the leaders in their field, the professionals, the teachers, they're real people too. I would imagine that kids, young people who are going through medicine that have family members who have been doctors probably struggle with imposter syndrome a little less because they would see the flaws of their parents and people like that. And I would think that people who like myself, maybe don't have a model in their personal life that are a medical professional will be a bit more vulnerable to imposter syndrome. But I think that would be another very concrete thing that you can do if you're feeling this way is find that mentorship. And that applies regardless of what you're doing, whether you're a doctor, or a nurse, a lawyer, what you're trying to accomplish at all. It could be, it could be an athlete. Whatever your goal is, if you're trying to achieve something that in your mind is significant, that there's a meaningful risk of failure, having that mentorship can really support you and really help you normalize a lot of the feelings that you have and give you a sense that yes, you can do it too. You belong. You have the ability to achieve those goals. I love speaking to medical students. I would love to get some comments down below. If you have any ideas on how you deal with imposter syndrome, if you have any experiences that you're struggling with, leave a comment. I enjoy interacting. We're building a little bit of a community here, and that's what this is all about. That's what gets me to make these videos. My name is Rich Hillsden. Thank you for watching.